pretty good there, huh, Jace? Perfect. That is a little squeezy cut with the exact same release pattern. I'm not trying to saw it off and try to turn my body and take all the speed out of the release. You can do this and you can have the same release and you can work on this with every golf club in your bag and start to see a whole different arsenal of shots come out. We know that we have to get the golf club from one side of the ball to the other. And we've got two very big options. And those options are a body driven release where you'll see a lot of golf instructors that will tell you to square the face early and to keep the body moving and the arms moving as one unit through the hitting area. And when you look over, it kind of looks like you could hold a glass of wine on your club face. That is a very, very, very slow way to swing the golf club. And the rate in which the golf club can move through the hitting area is based off of how I can turn my body. Now, the other release that you're gonna see a lot of golf instructors that have really latched onto what's really going on is you're gonna see that they teach a release where the hands and arms move very little and the club moves a substantial amount. We want the golf club moving its fastest down here. In fact, it's right before contact when the golf club is at its peak speed. But we need to think outside of that peak speed department and we need to think about how to create stability at that same time so that you have the ability to be able to control the golf ball when you look up and see it flying through the air. And that's exactly what you're gonna learn here today. I'm gonna to teach you a step-by-step -step process that's gonna help you develop a fast-paced release. And then I'm gonna show you how to tone it back so that you have the ability to be able to hit different kinds of shots on the golf course. It's pretty cool, huh? So our first order of business, what we need to do is we need to identify what your impact position is gonna look like and what it's gonna feel like. And this drill, it's important that you understand, is gonna work with every single grip pattern, whether you have a super weak grip like Colin Morikawa or a super strong grip like Dustin Johnson. This will work with every grip pattern and it will work with every golf club in your bag, except for your putter. You don't need to do this with your putter. You get what I'm saying? Now, the identifying process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my favorite seven iron here out of my bag and I'm gonna go ahead and take my setup position and I'm gonna go ahead and act like I'm getting ready to hit a shot here. And if you don't have a good setup, before you go through this drill with me today, do yourself a favor, head down below and watch the description or watch the link in the description so you can get a good setup because you need to have a setup that allows you to move. You get what I'm saying? Okay, good. Now that I've grabbed my favorite seven iron out of my bag, I'm gonna go ahead and take my setup and I'm just gonna move my body into a light impact position. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep my head and my chest really still. I'm gonna shift my hips left, open them up. And I'm gonna move my wrist into a position where now it's gonna move from that cupping that I have at a dress to where it's gonna move all the way to where I can get it bowed into the end of my left thigh. Now, if you look at the golf club, you can see that I've got it really, really de-lofted, okay? Now, this position here with my wrists and my arms is the position I want you to get really connected to. I want you to get addicted to this position. And what I want you to do now is I want you just to take the golf club and set it down on the ground. And I want you to have both hands in that same spot. Notice where your glove logo is pointed. Take notice of that. Okay, this is dependent on what sort of grip you brought. I have kind of a neutralist grip, so you're gonna see that my glove logo is not pointed perfectly down the target line, and it's not pointed out in front of me. It's pointed kind of in between. I want you to see that in your brain, and I want you to feel this position, and I want you to feel the right wrist on there as well. Now, what we've gotta do is we've gotta to work to get back to this position. So I want you to go ahead and get back to an address position. I want you to go ahead and just turn your body back to where your hands are just outside your trail thigh. From this position, I want you to make sure that your wrist is anatomically flat and your glove logo is pointed directly out in front of you, okay? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to shift your hips back over to that light impact position and open them up. And I want you to bring your wrist back down into that same spot. Now, what I want you to get connected to is not just getting your wrist to that position, is I want you to make sure that when you move to that spot, that your shoulders and your arms are tension free. Your wrists should feel like they've got some sort of manipulation in them because we're doing it to kind of exaggerate a little bit of this feel in here at first. And as we get the golf club in here and start moving through this position, we're gonna start shaking out some of that tension. So we're gonna do about 25 reps with no golf club, just turning our body back to get our hands outside of our trail thigh, shifting our hips left, opening them up, bringing our hands down in front of our lead thigh and getting into that position where it is bowed and pointed in that same direction that you just rehearsed. When you can do that for an extended period of reps like I just mentioned, and you don't screw up the party here at all, 
you would be ready to start moving on to the next piece, which is the most critical piece of this drill. So how we're gonna do this now, and you should have had really good step number one functionality here, where you've got good 15 to 25 reps under your belt, and they are perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda of pick up the pace a little bit and get our body to help support the arm and wrist function into a fully completed release. So what this is gonna look like is we're gonna go ahead and take our setup. Our right hand should be lower than our left, okay? When we do this, you should have about an inch, maybe an inch and a half of space there. We're gonna shift and turn our body. Glove logo is out in front of me. My hips are gonna lead the way. They're gonna shift and open up. I'm going into that bowed position. Now to get my hands and my arms to move in the direction of the target without swinging them, I could tilt my spine back keeping my buttons way back in behind my belt buckle and notice how far my arms just moved. I'm in this really awkward side bend position now. So all I did to make my hands and my arms move from here to the top of the speed zone on the lead side of my body is just tilt my spine back, which forced my shoulders to do what? My shoulders started to steepen. That's the stability factor that's gonna help you move the club really quickly through the hitting area, be able to keep your dynamic loft numbers in a good spot, but also not have this sort of path shift or plane shift that you, a lot of you run into that make it almost impossible for you to release the club properly. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our setup. And now what we wanna do is we wanna do 25 of the most perfect reps that you can do, going from a static address position, turning back, glove logo is flattened out in front of me, shifting my hips left, getting my wrist to work through. Okay, just focusing in on tilting my buttons back in behind my belt buckle not doing anything else different from my wrist from here up to that position. And as you go through these reps, you should be able to start to move a little bit quicker as long as you're connected to it. Do not let anything break down here. You can do that proficiently, and you're looking at it on camera, and it looks exactly like what you just did in step number one. Now you're ready to start going to step number three, where we start having some fun here and having a party and hitting some golf balls. All right, so step number three, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get our favorite seven iron back out of our bag, and now we're gonna start to do this exact same movement. We're gonna start shaking out the tension in our wrists. We're gonna make sure that we're tension-free as the hands and arms start to move through the completion of the speed zone, so to that hip high position. Now I want you to remember, at the completed part of your rep here when you do this, you should look over when you're done the rep and see that your golf club is perfectly towed up to the sky. Not toe left and not toe right. Perfectly towed up to the sky. If it's not, I want you to fix it, I want you to hold it static, and I want you to be able to work back and let the club swing to that same position before you start trying to hit any golf balls. And you need to be doing this at a very high frequency. You've just worked really hard. You've done about 50 total reps at this point. There's no point of going into kamikaze mode and erasing your hard work. You want your practice sessions to be meaningful. And in step number four, which I don't normally do, I'm gonna be giving you a little added bonus here today where I'm gonna show you how to start manipulating this stuff after we start hitting some golf balls. So here's how things are gonna look. We're gonna go ahead and take our setup. I like to practice with a golf ball down on the ground something for my eyes to focus on. Okay, this is very key for us because this is gonna make it a realistic situation. So we're gonna have both hands on the golf club and we're gonna go ahead and do some slow reps here at first just so you can see how it's gonna work. So my glove logo is now pointed out in front of me. Okay, my wrist is flat. I'm gonna shift my hips left. My wrists are gonna bow, tilting my spine back. I'm making sure the toe of the club is up to the sky on the lead side of my body. So I'm gonna demonstrate real slow for a couple reps. Okay, wrist is anatomically flat, shifting my hips left, tilting my spine back, toe of the club is up to the sky. Now, once you start getting really good at this and you're landing in the right spots, start letting your arms and your wrists get really tension-free on the way through. 
and let the club head start to swing. Okay, you're gonna notice that you can now start to brush the grass or the same bit of carpet that you're practicing on. All right, so now we've reached that point where we're ready to start hitting some golf balls, and this is where fun, the fun is gonna to start to happen. Now, I'm gonna co-mingle steps three and four here, but I want you to understand that the most important piece of the puzzle is that you don't just come out here into kamikaze mode and start rifling through golf ball after golf ball with your newfound talent here with your release. The whole objective is to get connected to the movements and work through a protocol that keeps you connected and then start to gradually increase the speed in which you do so. So my key points that we're working on is getting our wrists and our forearms into that impact position and continuing to move them post impact by letting the buttons on my shirt stay back in behind my belt buckle a substantial amount. And I'm letting the club swing to a toe up position. And I'm gonna to continue to say that to myself as I'm going through my reps. And as I get really good results, I'm gonna start picking up the pace and I'm gonna hit some shots, not trying to hit it out of the back of the range, but to try to produce the highest quality movement. So watch how I work through this to get you ready and set up for success. So I got myself set up. You're gonna see that I start really slow and small. Fixing the club, making sure it's perfect. That was good there. You've learned how to put speed in there the right way. You've got something that's adaptable to your release, which is exactly how we teach at My Golf DNA, is the adaptive swing, the adaptive release patterns. You just learned the baseline movement. There's a lot of things that go into this that live outside of that. We have to help you understand how to build and get yourself into these spots. But there's a fourth component here that can help you start to open up your toolbox when it comes to swinging the golf club. Now that movement that I taught you on the way through the hitting area where your spine starts to lean back to move your hands, what I want you to remember what that's doing from a down the line perspective is it's influencing the hand and arm path. Notice how my hand and arm path is working more down the target line here. Now what I can do to start to change my hand and arm path is I can actually start to change how my buttons and my belt buckle work through the hitting area. So if I wanna to try to hit some small cuts where I'm trying to use the same sort of release, then I'm gonna to need to have my hand and arm path a little bit more to the left, which means now I can actually start to take my buttons on my shirt, instead of leaning them back, is I can turn them a little bit over the top of my belt buckle and feel a little bit taller with my chest here. I can still use the same functionality in my wrists as I just felt to be able to start creating this manipulation. So it's pretty fun, right? And when you look at this, when you start to see the fact that you feel a little bit taller you're starting to hit some little squeeze cut shots here, and now you can do it with a tension-free release, it gets pretty addicting. You start getting yourself into this position where you didn't even know you could hit a cut. So watch how I do this now. So I like to narrow my stance up a little bit, and what I do to, to hit this shot is I'm gonna feel my chest kind of get a little bit out in front of the golf ball, and I'm gonna turn a little bit more over the top of my belt buckle as I'm letting the release happen, okay? I'm still seeing that bowing of the wrist. It's pretty good there, huh, Jace? That is a little squeezy cut with the exact same release pattern. I'm not trying to saw it off and try to turn my body and take all the speed out of the release. You can do this and you can have the same release and you can work on this with every golf club in your bag and start to see a whole different arsenal of shots come out. I should just try to hit cuts all the time. You can do this with your wedges. You can do it with your seven iron. I wouldn't recommend that you start going out there and do it with your driver right away, but it's gonna take some, some practice here. But remember, what I just taught you was a way for you to have control of what you're doing in your own golf game. So you don't have to go out there and start looking for information that's not gonna do you a whole lot of good because so many of you fall victim 
to this information abyss that actually puts you in harm's way. You want a tension-free release. You want a fast release. You want a release that's got all kinds of control in it. Do that by learning how your wrist should function and how your body needs to support that function through the hitting area. And you're gonna find that you're a much better, much happier golfer when it's all said and done that now has this giant toolbox of shots that now makes your practice sessions a whole lot more what? A whole lot more fun. That's right, that's the name of the game is having fun. Now listen, I know you have a lot of choices when it comes to golf instruction, do me a big favor. Come over to the website, let us look at your golf swing, let us help you figure out what your plan really needs to look like. It costs you less than a dozen Pro V1s to get started with me so I can look at your golf swing and you can actually stay and get two lessons per month at that same exact price. It's a pretty good deal. There's also options for you to have unlimited access to me as well, and our members love it. Now is the time to get started with us. Don't miss your opportunity before it's too late. We'll see you guys in the next video.